Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I just read the lyrics for today's song, and they are massively intriguing. It immediately brings to mind some of the contemporary operas that I've seen or sung in that are about war or a dystopian future. And I'm really curious how these lyrics are going to be portrayed in rock music. So let's get to it. really interesting combination of instruments immediately from the get-go. Uh, there's so much funk that I hear in that keyboard sound, but that drum has definitely an impending doom contained in it. I'm going to start a little bit further forward. This is sounds like a, a good crowd. This, this is so disturbing. Um, these lyrics seem so heavy and uh, it's just about surviving in a war, essentially. It's, they are deep and heavy. And this is so dancey. It, it, I think that they're making a statement about that, maybe about just finding a way still through life. But whoa, uh, again, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Back a little bit. Really, really cool live concert setup here. I just, I love the lighting and uh, I always appreciate it when I get a live performance like this because I can see exactly what the singer is doing. Running before singing. We'll talk about that. Whoa. This is like, this is really different. The, they are going out on a limb with a lot of these vocal sounds and expressions. They're definitely not uh, aiming for pretty quite often. And, uh, <laughs> whoa. Okay. I want to go back, digest this a little bit more. I'm Wow, he's he's doing so much jaw manipulation there, um, but at the same time he's got the freedom to just do a little like octave leap. I think it was up to falsetto on point. Um, 
so the way that he's playing with his head here, pulling back like this, uh, it locks everything up. And usually we're looking for freedom around the vocal tract. And so that definitely makes a big shift in the timbre, which is exactly what I think he's going for. Uh, additionally, I see, yeah, a locked jaw that goes into place there. It's all shifting the timbre. I'm getting used to it now. It's like a yodel that he does. And he's definitely got this very deliberate non-enunciation thing that's happening. Okay, this is, honestly, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how all of the pieces are weaving together and I don't get it yet. So I'm gonna hit play and listen for some more, more time, and then we'll come back and analyze some more. Transmit the message to the receiver. Hope of an answer someday. I got three passports, couple of visas. Don't even know my name. I'm on the hillside, looks a loading. Everything's ready to roll. I, I, I. Sleep in the daytime, I work in the nighttime. I'm not gonna get on. This ain't no party. This ain't no disco. Whoa, I, I still do not entirely get it. There's so much, uh, much manipulation of the sound that is happening. There is a, a fundamental sound that is good and has a both unique quality and some different kinds of balance in it that I think is a very attractive sound. That's um, a baseline though, it gets shifted so much and there's also this, the dance moves that are continually happening here and that uh, it almost feels like it's uh, making fun of this dance of life or something along those lines. Uh, also, the different dance moves definitely can affect how a person is supporting their voice. So there's some very interesting things. He has like snake legs. I won't point if you guys have ever seen the, the snake legs swing dancing stuff, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. Transmit the message to the receiver. Like, look at that. Jello, jello for knees. Jello for knees. Um, I'm gonna go back to that and we'll start doing some vocal analysis here. Even so, even he's holding his lips back. This is one of the ways he's affecting the sound. Again, also, it's like there's he's drawing so much attention tension and tension into this area, trying to make it tighter. Wow, yeah. And you even see this like vein that's popping out there. I think that's probably because of the tension he's putting in this area. Fascinating, fascinating. Transmit the message to the receiver. Hope of an answer someday. I got three passports, couple of visas. Don't even know my other man Out on the hillside Ducks are loaded Everything's ready to roll I, I, I. Sleep in the daytime I work in the nighttime I'm not gonna get on Okay <laughs> So that last sound just went straight through the nose and it actually um, it restricted a bunch of the pharyngeal space so you got like a ha like a, a very um very squeezed nasal sound, right? Just, it's so fascinating to me because I know so few singers, professional or otherwise, amateurs too, that are also going for a total unique sound. They would never go to this sound. They'd never say, oh yeah, that's something I want to perform on stage. It's like blowing my mind. This is, <laughs> there is a time and a place for every sound. To the receiver. So when he goes, Siva, uh, uh, you can really hear that that natural tone that he has, has got some nice balance in it. It's got some depth in it. It's got some clarity, right? He's got the, he's able to deliver things on pitch or be able to slide off of them. He's got a lot of possibilities that he can do with his voice. And what I hear him doing is continually going to some crazy extremes. Transmit the message 
And even the backing vocals are really, really far forward in the mask too, just like like cats. To the receiver, hook up an answer someday. And I uh, three passports, couple of visas, don't even know my remain. On a hillside, looks a loading, everything's ready to roll. I, I, I. Sleep in the daytime, I work in the nighttime. I'm not gonna get on it. This ain't no party, this ain't no disco, this ain't no fooling around. Lost in the mud, I see the cheater. I ain't got time for that now. Wow. wow. This is such a surprising suggestion. By the way, this is a patron choice. So this is specifically something that patrons have said Elizabeth needs to listen to. They've gone through a whole like a whole voting system a couple different times for this song to get in front of me. And it's mind-boggling. Thank you patrons. This is one of those ones that I just I had no idea that something like this existed and I'm I'm going to use this as an example in so many different teaching situations. I can tell already. It's just, yeah, my mind is, is pretty blown at this point. We're going to talk about aerobics and how that can help your voice in just a bit because it looks like they're about to start running. Uh, but I'm going to come back here one more time and just, <laughs> just listen in awe. Oh, that's funky. This actually is a really, really great tempo for jogging. Uh, I don't do running as much as I used to, but I did have a running playlist for a long time that uh, this would have been a perfect song for it. Fascinating. I, this has such a drive forward in it that uh, it's sort of like a dancey kind of feel. I'm so shocked that the lyrics are, are, are fitting with this music and we're going to talk about that a lot more. But for now, let's talk about aerobics and how that can affect the voice. Some Some singers I know swear that they sing better after exercise. Some say that they actually sing worse. And uh, I think that there's a pretty wide spectrum and people can fall at different places there. But what we know could possibly happen is that when the blood gets to flowing better, it can help uh, essentially nutrients or, or sort of functionality maybe get to those vocal folds a little bit easier, might make things a little easier to move, which would make it just easier to uh, phonate, right? Uh, but on the other hand, if you're breathing really, really hard, it can actually dry out the vocal folds to make sure you have a lot of water. Of course, maybe some instant steam for instant topical hydration. Uh, but I personally really like working out because I feel like it grounds my energy a little bit better and lets me get into my support system better. So not just about this, but it's about how deeply I can breathe, like how much more flexibility does my rib cage have so that I can take a bigger breath. And it's also about um, feeling like I'm not stiff in the body. Again, that has that sort of flexibility, has movement because singing should never be a really, really stiff kind of function unless you're going for a crazy sound with this like mega stiff jaw at one point. Uh, but that being said, if you are doing a lot of aerobic activity and you're breathing really hard, it can be hard to sustain a vocal sound. So I'm surprised to see so much running on stage and then just bam into singing right away. Then again, I'm not hearing huge long lines that require a ton of uh, breath control all the way, you know, 20 seconds later. Go back just a little bit. It's such a funky solo. It's very futuristic. Heard 
about Detroit, heard about Pittsburgh PA. You ought to know not to stand by the window. Somebody see you up there. He's got this like really funny thing where he does this yodel and, and jumps up to an octave above. And it looks like he can do it in almost any position. This is not an ideal position to sing from. He's making it work though. I mean, everybody can break a rule. I think that's a, and there's a, there are times to break rules and times to not. But um, yeah, the way that the rib cage is collapsed there is not conducive to a nice, easy breath flow, but it does make for a great, great stage scene. Houston. Heard about Detroit, heard about Pittsburgh, PA. His natural speaking voice and the way it goes into the singing there is really nice. Uh, that's something that people, especially doing musical theater, where you need to go between singing and speech easily, will uh, particularly focus on. Heard about Houston, heard about Detroit, heard about Pittsburgh, PA. You ought to know not to stand by the window, somebody see you up there. Some peanut butter to last a couple of days. But I ain't got no speakers, ain't got no headphones, ain't got no records to play. What's in college? Wow. This <laughs> it it makes the brain just get frustrated. I'm I'm like uh, it, there's this idea of don't stand by a window, implying that like you could be killed if you go out to your window and you're seen through the window, right? That's a terrible thing. And yet there's this uh, driving fun, uplifting beat underneath. It's just, it's basically, I think there's, I think there's an underlying message here talking about how it's almost like people get used to being in wartime. That they get, there's a, nonchalance about living in a society like this when it's every single day for years and years and years and years. And that's such a horrible thing to get used to. Uh, my brain is, there's this actually, this song might be one of those songs I decide I don't like, believe it or not. I, it, it feels like it, it, it's doing the thing that it's probably supposed to do, which is really disturbing me that it feels fun and bouncy while it's so heavy at the same time. <laughs> Stand by the window, somebody see you up there. I got some horses, some peanut butter to last a couple of days. Like, that's but awful. I, you shouldn't have to no live speakers, on peanut butter for a couple days. Ain't got no headphones, ain't got no records to play. There's also this like scarecrow sort of posture that he takes up quite often. And I, I wonder if that's sort of making some reference to feeling puppeted because it seems like, it seems like this person has been run around the block a few times. Uh, ain't got no speakers, ain't got no headphones, ain't got no records to play. There's there's another aspect to it that I think is part of what feels disturbing as well. And that is he has a lot of emotion and subtext in everything he's singing. There's he's like, I don't know exactly what it is. And that's not necessary. Just as long as a singer is strongly connected to the emotion of what they're singing and that each word is some sort of different expression of that emotion, you don't have to know exactly what it is. You just feel it and you feel that they are communicating a message that is beyond words. He's got so much emotion and intensity in these things, even while there's this sort of nonchalant dance that's going on at times, it's... Uh, it's wildly disturbing, actually. It's 
it's it ain't no ain't no party ain't no disco ain't no fooling around yet there's so much in the vocals that are a certain kind of fooling around and in the in the moves as well it's just it's contradiction in so many places Got through the roadblock. We've been needing with the crowd. Notice the vibrato. I don't know if that was quite a bleating vibrato, though it did sound like it. Um, his vibrato at times can be fairly irregular and a little wacky. And I think that is all part of the character and sound he's going for. Transit. Got through the roadblock. We've been needing with the crowd. We got computers. We're tapping phone lines. Know that that ain't allowed. Like students, we dress like housewives, or in a suit and a tie. Changed my hairstyle so many times now. Don't know what I look like. You make me shiver. I it it feels like he's like laying down for death on stage right now. It like <laughs> I'm this entire performance just feels like it's got so many underlying messages that are making my stomach rumble. So that he's actually essentially choking himself for that final sound. It, it sounds a little unhinged at times, especially when it goes up and does that, that sliding around up there. And then of course comes down and does this almost choking sound. Well, actually the whole thing, unhinged is a good way to describe it. It, at first I wasn't sure how unhinged and it feels like the more the song is going on, the more I'm realizing this could just be a person's mind essentially falling apart, trying to figure out how to deal with living through war. Oh, wow. You make me shiver. I feel so tender. We ain't got plenty of tears. Don't get exhausted. I'm losing driving. You wanna get you some sleep. Stand on my notebooks. Oh, whack it on notebooks. They won't help me survive. My chest is air from heaven. Burns like a furnace. The burning gives me a light. Oh, that almost sounded like an air raid siren. Oh my gosh. Um, I wonder, I, I don't know, is it difficult to play a guitar while jogging on stage? Uh, it, I do think that that idea of being out of breath and constantly under pressure, um, it could actually be helpful to continue to do jogging and create that kind of breathless sound, that stressed sound all the time. So this this actually could really work for the intended vocal sound. Gosh, Ugh, the jump there. Ugh. He is a very uh, lithe dude, and he must have uh, great cardio conditioning because uh, I don't know how long he's been doing this or running in concert if it's their first one, but uh, yeah, that kind of running and singing is is tough, uh, and it's impressive what he's doing. And phew, I don't know if it's just for this song, but I, I know that if you did this during an entire song like this, that uh, it, it would definitely affect the sound, 
100%. It's going to affect the sound. Even, even the foot hitting the floor each time is going to make the body have some sort of rebound. And that can be hard to control at the vocal level. So that already, and then you have the breathlessness that's going to be coming in, the air that can be coming by the vocal folds and drying them out potentially at times. Uh, there's so much that could be uh, contributing to it being hard to control while doing this, but even afterwards, right? You got to make back that water to make sure your vocal folds stay hydrated for the rest of the show. There's a lot, a lot that can go into running and then singing or running while singing. Jeez. The pitch bends. I wonder what the audition is like to become a supporting band member. Just saying. We're going to put you on a treadmill. Let's see what happens. Here's a microphone. must have former experience in track. Yeah, I really dig this particular percussion set with the sound. Whoa. Maybe it's the last song? That would be good. That would be a good choice. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> I have so many questions. This is such a thought-provoking song and performance. The setting of the lyrics, right, just totally blew my mind, right? I never, ever dreamed that it would be set this way. But then add to it this cardiovascular element and how that affects the entire performance. And then all of the other different shapes that he took, it's like he's really in the mind of this character. David Byrne just slayed this performance and, and made it feel so real and so disturbing in so many ways. Wow. Wow. You know, this actually reminds me a little bit of uh, the sober performance from Tool and Maynard. That was incredible. I'll put together a playlist with that and a few other songs for you if you want to check that out over here. And may you fall more in love with music every day.